Out of there, guys and gals. On today's episode, I gotta figure out why the old Taco Express isn't rolling very well. But before I can do that, I've gotta get rid of a lot of uninvited guests. Everywhere. Fantastic. One's there. Another one there. Got one up there. Uh, another one there. Oh, we got a live one here. Another one right there. I thought I had gotten most of them yesterday. Apparently not. Still fighting the good fight. Yeah, they're, they're not happy. Got another one there. Another one there. Oh, look. Another one up there. This one was taken out by the fan. Got another one up here. I have been going in and out of this dart. Trying to make sure that there are no wasp nests inside it. Hopefully there's not any secret ones underneath here. I gotta do some work today. Oh good, another one. That one up there uh, decided to dump all its wasp and larvae all over the dark. Yeah, lots of uh, dead wasp on this thing. I don't know what wasp spray will do to a paint job, but I'm pretty sure it won't affect the dark. Oh good, uh, another one. Now, I'm not gonna be able to get all these little boogers, but maybe, just maybe, I'll get enough of them where I can actually work on the dark today. Because earlier I walked in here and I just got dive bombed from every rafter in this barn. And uh, I'm not looking at getting anaphylactic shock today. Well, there you go. That's a recap of basically my last two days. Um, I didn't film all of it because uh, I've already been through six or seven of these cans. Yeah, it's getting ridiculous. You know, heck, most YouTubers want sponsors for race car parts. I'd be satisfied if um, this someone can send me a whole bunch of wash spray. So now that I think I've uh, at least resolved the majority of the uninvited guest, I need to figure out why the Taco Express doesn't roll very well. Like in previous episodes, I noticed when I was messing with that shifter that this rear axle was hard to turn up on jack stands. So it could be a number of things one it could be the brakes dragging which if y'all watch my no name nationals video y'all know i had uh problems with the brake cylinders falling apart on this side right off the trailer which i'm hoping it's that problem because i think i can resolve that problem two for some deranged reason uh we got a bearing locked up on this three there's something wrong with the third member which i doubt there is but it's possible that when I did my sandblasting, I didn't get all the sand out, and those bearings are packed full of sandblasting sand. Which, let's be honest, if that is the case, it's not surprising. So, let's get this car up in the air and figure out why it won't turn. Truck 2 working on a wooden deck is just get your tires just high enough because um, if I know anything about this wooden deck, uh, it will give out at any point in time. All right, so obviously the car's in park. All right, neutral. E-brake is off. See how hard it is to pull, turn that. God, I hope it's these brakes. Let's uh, pop this off and see what's going on here. Ta 
Taco Express got the biggest nuts you've ever seen. Oh. Uh-oh. Well, we know that breaks loose. Let's see what's going on here. Everything looks like it's supposed to. All right, let's pop off that other side, I guess. Yep. Well, that brake came off easy too. Crap. Now, I gotta figure out. Well, I mean, it, it turns, but man, it just takes a lot of effort. Obviously, there's no wheel on this. Well, I mean, I hear no noise. It's just, oh, it's much harder to turn the reverse. So that seems to be fine. Ooh, is it hard to turn in reverse? Huh. All right, after a brief education from Jess Mopar Joe, he let me know that in reverse, it turns the drum and does stuff that makes it a little more difficult to turn this. And with the lower gears, it amplifies that. Anyways, I'm going to pop the drive shaft off. That way, there's nothing that could be impeding this rear axle. Find out. Why is it so hard to turn? Because this car is hard to push. And if it's not brakes, then we got to make sure it's not the axle. Because another thing that um, was possibly pointed out to me is, you know, that, that housing's a junkyard housing and it might have a bend to it, which you would think then the axle shafts wouldn't go in. Nah, surely it's not that. All right, let's pop the drive shaft off and find out if this thing spins any better. Pro tip. If uh, you're working on a deck floor like me, put something down so when you drop your bolts and your nuts, uh, they don't fall underneath the deck that you definitely can't get under. Nope. Oh, yeah, it's still in neutral. I mean, this thing turns fine. One thing, these U-bolts uh, don't look like they were evenly tightened. This old pass duddy didn't do a very good job of that. Now, fun fact, this drive shaft, which also could be the other problem, um, is actually a little bit too long. And uh, when I say it's got full engagement, it's all the engagement. And the only way I can take it off is if there's weight on this rear axle. Which, you know, with the springs on it, it the weight on it, it pushes the rear axle back a little bit rather than when you put it, rather than when it's hanging off a four post lift. So, maybe that's the problem. Maybe. This drive shaft is just shoved in that transmission and it's binding. You know, I probably should check those front brakes. Yeah, yeah never. I don't think I ever did check the front to see if they were dragging. This always went to the back because it was so hard to turn. With the spool in it. Well, the death charger axles are fully locked, but they've got such big tires to, to turn on. They're not that bad to turn. I might be freaking out over nothing. There we go, there we go. Easy, easy, easy. Okay. Let's turn that so all my needle bearings don't fall out. All right. Drive shaft removed. Which, this comes out much easier when there's weight on this rear axle. All right, let's find out if uh, it's paranoia or there's a problem. Oh. I mean... I mean, it's firm, but, you know, with that on there. So, I can turn it by hand, and I hear nothing. So, 
So, obviously there's You know, I seen her remember. When the old Dodge Whisperer set up this third member, it's a 489 case, which y'all can watch this video doing it. He did it by the book, had all the right numbers. It was a used gear set, which he gave me a heads up about. And uh, it was right there on the bench and turned great. But, obviously talking to a lot of guys that Apparently those 489 cases, I think they have crust sleeves in them and you got to set them up pretty tight. So maybe that's just what I'm not used to is there's not a lot of miles on this thing. And I'm just used to really clapped out rear axles. Because, I mean, this turns. It's just a tight rear axle, I guess. Doesn't make any noise. Yeah, there's no clanking, grinding, nothing. I guess it says paranoia. Or is that transmission dragging? Because when you put this thing in reverse, it's violent. Like, real violent. Okay, sorry about the light glare. Alright, one thing I also need to check is... Let me check this oil. Because, uh... Old Dodge Whisper reminded me again, just like I said before, that that was a used gear set. And, you know, just check for the typical glitters. That, and, you know, it does make a slight noise. So, I don't know if, uh, maybe she's dry. Oh, the grief. Dang, did I put Loctite on this freaking plug? Let's see. Oh, nope, she's full. Very full. And, uh... That looks very, very clean. I don't see any glitter. It's probably going to be hard to tell for y'all with the sun glare. But, uh, no, feels good. Looks clean. Let me just stick my finger in there to confirm. I'll even, I'll even wipe this. Wait, does this have a magnet on it? I can't remember. Let's see. Do that. Oh yeah, no, she is full, 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 and I'm making a mess. Oh yeah, so, now that I've made a nice mess, clean oil, I mean, if y'all haven't figured this out, is, you know, I most definitely don't know what I'm doing as far as racing and cars, so I make a lot of phone calls and talk to a lot of people to get first-hand knowledge and experience because, you know, Google lies to you. Oh, quick side note, while I try to figure out why the um, Taco Express doesn't roll very well. On June 10th in Cattle Mills, Texas at Red Line Raceway, the old Taco Express is going to be taking on everyone. That's right, I'm going to be competing in the Streetcar Chronicles fastest slow car race. It's going to feature grudge racing, cheap street with all the typical rules, and the Duddy Adventure Catch Me If You Can race. Since a whole bunch of people from Streetcar Chronicles got really upset by a 798 four-door dart, I decided to give them a chance, see if they can catch me down the line. So I'll be racing seven-second cars, six-second cars, five-second cars, possibly four-second cars, down there at Red Line Raceway. So we're going to find out which one of these cars is the fastest slow car. So here's the event. If you want to race in the Duddy Adventure Catch Me If You Can race, there's only three rules. One, you have to donate $5 to the Ryland Strong Foundation. Two, you got to beat me to the line. That's right. You actually have to beat me to the end of the track. Three, you have to have the worst reaction time of the night. You know, for all you fellers that talk about how much you can get me, I want to find out if you can catch me. So here's the thing. We're going to line up, it's going to be pro tree, and we're going to go. Now, I'm guessing I'm going to tree you, and I'm going to tree you bad. But that's going to work into your favor, because you've got to sit there on that line as long as possible and still beat me to the end of the track. Now, a lot of you are going, Daddy, that's just basically bracket racing. No, it's not, because you aren't going to have a light to tell you when to go. 
our lights are going to go off at the same time. And the Taco Express is going to start at a blistering 798 run. If you've got one of those fast cars, you'll know how long you'll need to sit there at that line before you need to take off and try to catch me to the end. Because at the end of the night, the slowest reaction time, and whoever beats me to the line is going to win. So if you think you've got one of the fastest slow cars in the Northeast Texas area on June 10th, come down to Caddo Mills, the race line raceway, and come out to the Streetcar Chronicles fastest slow car race, aka the uh, over the hill race, because um, apparently a couple of us are getting a little long in the tooth that weekend, possibly on the verge of becoming a gray hair. Definitely not aging gracefully. But that's besides the point. If you want a chance to take on the Taco Express in all its four-door glory, and if you think you can just hang out at the line, oh, eat a taco, have a refreshing beverage, possibly work out your tune for that night, start working on your taxes for next year, calculate the wind velocity of an African swallow, or just gritting your teeth while that trans brake is steadily just humming. Whatever your strategy is, like I said, Three rules. Donate, beat me to the end of the track, and see how long you can uh, sit at that line. Because if you really are a uh, true street car or race car, and you have that gap power, you shouldn't be worried about leaving on green. You should be able to hang out and still catch me to the end. So have at it, and catch me if you can. All right, back to this dumpster fire that I call my race car. So since the rear axle seems to spin fine. It's tight, but it spins fine. Let's check the fronts. Let's see if I've got a caliper hanging. All right, let's check for drag on the front wheels. Oh, oh, oh. oh and this is rust. God, that doesn't sound good at all. Dang. Bearing. I've seen her murk, but bearing. Ow! Bearing. Ow! Dang it! Ugh! Watch your fingers. Yeah, that's not bearing. That is rusty rotors. Okay. Okay. Oh, God. Pro tip, if you're going to put your tires only like a quarter inch off the, the deck, don't stick your fingers down there, because... Okay, doesn't roll the best, but the car's been sitting for a while. Let's try the other side. See, it was to move there. Oh. Ooh. Oh, I think this side needs new bearings. Yeah. Oh, I know it needs new bearings. Bad part is, is I actually remember putting new bearings on um, one side of this car for some reason. And didn't do it on the other. I think this is the side that doesn't have new bearings in it. Yeah, that's, that was smart. But I'm sure many of y'all have theories, suggestions, or ideas, which you are more than welcome to leave in the comment section down below, because what better way to diagnose a vehicle than through a YouTube video? Yeah. So, leave a comment down below on why you think the uh, old Taco Express doesn't roll that well. You know, they say loose is fast. That might explain a lot of things with this car. Anyways, well, let's throw it back together and uh, see if the car starts because it hasn't run since the vintage drags and um, I need to get it ready for my next race. Well, while down here uh, tightening up this drive shaft again, notice that uh, this fuel pump looked kind of oily. Uh, smelling that, uh, it smells like gas. So, uh, I think we need to find out if the 
fuel pump is leaking. Because there's a suspicious stain on the deck. Fantastic. <laughs> Sweating horsepower. Let's see if this thing runs. Oh. All right, she cranked up pretty good. I went ahead and moved that lid underneath that fuel pump. Mainly because it's just dusty and I'll see if there's any drips. Alright, we got her warmed up. God, that pump sounds bad. It's making all kinds of noises. But no drips or leaks. Ah, so what's y'all's theory in the comments section down below? Why does this pump make so much noise and keep changing pitches? I've got some theories. I will say the um, stock, very, very, very used valve train that I reused on this engine from several other engines, it's noisy. It's it's very clattery. Uh, not sure if y'all heard that in the video. It likes to chatter here and uh, over here. More chattering on that side than over here. So, um, yeah, who, who would have thought uh, ditching the... Very used and abused valve train out of the Dakota this motor originally came from. And swapping it out with the valve train from a um, Jeep Cherokee? I don't know. It was a Magnum that came out of a, either Durango, another Dakota, or one of those Grand Cherokees. It was used too. Yeah, hundreds of thousands of miles. So, um, yeah, we're going to have to address that one day because... Uh, it makes a lot of noise. Luckily, the uh, oil is clean. Well, I never found any leaks with that pump, but uh, leave a comment down below if uh, you've had an electric fuel pump that for some reason gets oily and smells like gas, but doesn't seem to be leaking anything, and makes odd noises while running. Probably going to have to replace that. Anyways, uh, I guess I was hyperbolic about most of the Taco Express. It seems to be in order in some shape or fashion it's good enough for the catch me if you can race remember june 10th red line raceway if you want to race me and you think you can really get me but can you catch me also be sure to check out streetcar chronicles for updates on this event i'm thinking he's probably going to take a run at me too rumor has it is uh, i also won't be the only mopar there so uh yeah, come check it out, because uh, hopefully I'm not the only Mopar there. I need a lot of backup. A lot of backup. See y'all next time. Well, I take that back. It finally let out a drip. Where is it coming from? Is it one of the fittings? Or is it the base? Oh, I think I figured it out, right there. You're, you're not Jack. Come on, Jack. Hey, you're not Jack either. There you go, buddy. Hey, what are you, not Jack. No, you're you're a cow. Very hungry cow. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Whoa. Jack doesn't share, buddy. Sorry. Hate to break it to you. Jack doesn't like to share. Oh, yeah. He's angry. Oh, you hungry cows surrounded by grass, and yet you are trying to steal Jack's dinner. You know, based on the color of your hide, I think
think I'm going to call you Future Taco. What do you think about that? 